Of course I'd scratch my face right before starting recording. Of course I'd do that. Anyway, let's get this weekly vlog on the road. Hello friends, I'm Rosa. Welcome to the channel or welcome if you're new. Is it just me or are you just like miles and miles away from me? Hi, okay. So doing another weekly vlog this week, although I am starting this on a Wednesday simply because the last two days have been very busy but that's just how it is sometimes. I, however, am reading something that I know some of you will appreciate that I've jumped into. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. And I'm pretty sure it's gonna take me at least the rest of the week to read these two books. It's a duology, there's a hint for you. And also I am getting very exciting book mail this week as well. Plus I actually have an owl crate box to unbox in just a little bit. I do wanna update you on the reading situation. Plus I also got a question over on Patreon that I thought I would answer regarding makeup. It's not something that I talk about a lot here on the channel, also because it's not something that I wear a lot of, but I figured if one person asked me on Patreon, maybe more people, more of you, would be curious about it. So we're gonna go through that as well. Actually, let's do that as the very first thing because I have my makeup bag on my desk right behind me, or right behind you, not, it's behind you, like, anyway. So I'm very low maintenance when it comes to, at least I think I am. If I'm understanding maintenance the right way, then I'm very low maintenance when it comes to makeup. I don't wear a lot on a daily basis. What I'm wearing right now is my telescopic, that's not the back here. Is that upside down? No, it isn't. Okay, telescopic mascara by L'Oreal. It's a very popular mascara. I'm wearing some eyeliner. This one is called Le Liner. <laughs> that sounds so awkward. Signature, and it's also by L'Oreal. This one right here. This one is in brown, so. I don't often wear black eyeliners, but also I only wear them on the upper width line because I don't do well with cat line. What's it called? Like cat eyeliner. I've been told several times that it, it would probably, like I should try it out because people are like, I think it would look good on you, but my eye shape does not work with it at all. <laughs> So no. And then eyebrows are a little bit different for me because I'm a redhead, but I'm also a lighter redhead. So essentially what that means is that when I'm not wearing makeup, which is also why you don't see me a lot without makeup, at least my like my basic makeup, um, is that my eyelashes and my eyebrows are basically not see-through, but if you if I'm standing like five meters away from you, you can't see them, if that makes any sense whatsoever. So doing eyebrows is a whole process for me. So I start out by using Brow Wiz by Anastasia Beverly Hills. This one is in the color Strawburn, which is a new color, and I'm so happy they started making it because Auburn was too dark for me personally. And then I have two of these that are the Boy Brow by Glossier and it's an auburn. The reason I have two is because on its own, it's way too dark for me. So I just use a little bit of it and then I have one that's just clean and I kind of just like even it out that way. So I get a very thin layer of this, but that's pretty much it. Oh, and I like to have a little bit of inner corner highlighter on as well, like right in here. So, oh, that's upside down. So I use Fenty Beauty Kilowatt in Fire Crystal. And when I'm feeling extra fancy, I'll use this one, which is also Fenty Beauty, but it's Diamond Bomb in How Many Carrots. This one is like, wait, hold on. I know we're mainly a book channel, but just in case you want to see, it probably looks disgusting at this point, but like she's very diamondy and I love it. So, so that's pretty much, that's what I'm wearing right now. Um, that's what I usually wear when I do vlogs. If I do like other videos, I might wear this on my skin, but I don't really like to wear stuff on my skin other than skincare. But this is the Perfecting Skin Tint, also from Glossier. And this is in the color G12, which is one of the fairest, one of the lightest colors they have. Because again, I'm redheaded and I'm just, light skinned, that's just how it is. We're going into summer now. I'm gonna stand out so much, it's fine. Tanning culture in Scandinavia is like extreme, so. But as for reading updates, back to the books. <laughs> We're not a makeup channel here. I just thought I would answer that just in case, you know, more people were wondering. But as for reading, yesterday I finished Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score, which I talked about in last week's vlog. It's an adult contemporary romance. It's about a girl a woman, she's 36, she's not a girl anymore. But she basically flees her own wedding by crawling out of the 
church's basement window and then ends up in the small town where her sister is and her sister. They're twins, by the way, but they're like complete opposites of each other. So she ends up in this town. She finds out that she actually has a niece and her sister is in some deep trouble. Like, it's, I don't know. The sister's not the greatest person on the planet. Let's just put it like that. So while she's there, she's kind of realizing that everyone's looking at her like she's crazy because they don't like her sister. Her sister's name is Tina. Her own name is Naomi. And there's a dude called Knox who she meets shortly after entering a bar in this town and he's like straight up like get out of here we hate you blah 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 but also he's just not a very happy kind of person if you will so the book is basically about them their relationship the relationship with the knees and how that progresses there is also like parental relationships it's about relationships like I would say. And in last week's vlog, I also kept saying that it was definitely not a rom-com, which I still don't think it is, but it got more like rom-com vibes halfway through it. It started getting a little bit funny, whereas it was just very, I mean, it was always funny, but it started getting more funny. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense whatsoever, but it definitely had some rom-com vibes to it towards the end of it. Just not for the first half of the book, at least. I also found out why it gives me Mariana Zapata vibes. It's not because it's like super slow burn, maybe a little bit in some kind of way, but it's a grumpy sunshine, which I mean, every Mariana Zapata book I've read so far has been a grumpy sunshine. So that's just kind of what I connect with her books. And so when I read another longer adult contemporary romance, it's not a rom-com and, and there's grumpy sunshine in it. I'm like, Mariana Zapata, this gives me Mariana Zapata vibes. So, but I loved it. It was, it was great. I think I'm Ended up giving it like four and a half or something, so I really thoroughly enjoyed it. I was laughing at it a lot throughout the end of it. But as for what I'm reading right now, when I started today, Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. I'm only like 12 pages into it though, so don't ask me too much about it. Well, you can on Sunday or <laughs> Sunday. This video is not going up on Sunday. You can next week when this video goes up, <laughs> but right now I don't know a lot. Other than I'm really intrigued by the way that this is written, her prose is very, I almost want to call it like poetic, but it's, that's not a correct term. It's very lyrical, I think. Like there's something very musical about it. Not really, I don't, it's, it's, it's intriguing, it's fascinating. So far at least, but again, 12 pages might change, who knows, but that's what I'm reading right now. And if I like this, I will be going into Muse of Nightmares because I do actually own that book. So I'll let you guys know how this is going throughout the week or throughout the remainder of the week. But now, no more ranting. I have an April Owl Crate box to open that's finally gotten out of customs after two weeks. So let's get to it. Okay, so I am on the floor. <laughs> as per usual when doing unboxings, I just like to display the items as we're opening them showing them off and everything, so shelves are very useful for that. Before we get started, I do wanna just quickly say thank you to Allcrate for sending me this box. It's the April one, so we are a little bit behind, but that's because it's been stuck in customs for like two and a half weeks. <laughs> but also, I have a rep code with Allcrate currently, so if you're interested in getting 15% off of your first subscription, you can use code ROSA. I don't gain anything from it, like monetary compensation or whatever it's called. It's just in case you want 15% off, so. But anyway, let's get started. I am actually really excited for some of the items in this because I remember two fandoms, especially, maybe three, because we'll get to them once I open the items. And I'm gonna try to make this a little bit faster because I do realize that this is a weekly vlog and I've literally just ranted for like 10 minutes. <laughs> Gotta get some hydration in for the serious unboxing business. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was tightly closed. Okay, we got our box. Is it gonna fall out? Yes. Okay, well, all oh, right, yeah, that's the thing. We got our box open here. I see some coffee on the top. Here's the art on the spoiler card. The theme for this month is, or for April, is peek behind the curtain, which in itself is a theme. Love it, sounds very 
theatrical. First off, I see Bones Coffee Company. Oh, it's Phantom of the Opera. Okay, this is the Phantom of the Opera item. Presents Angel of Music, Chocolate Eclair. Wait, is it not coffee? I'm so... Small batch, medium roasted, or medium roast. Oh, and you can use code Phantom20 for 20% off your order if you're interested. So I don't drink coffee. I knew that this was gonna come with a coffee item. I don't drink it, so I'm probably gonna give this to my mom. She said that she would be interested in it. Does that mean it has chocolate in it? I'm so confused. Chocolate eclair. We're a bit obsessed with this Phantom of the Opera inspired coffee that Bones Coffee Co. blended exclusively for this box. You won't need to turn your face away from the garish light of day once you've had a copy of this delicious chocolate eclair favored or flavored brew. So it is chocolate flavored. That's is that good for coffee? Like, I honestly have no idea. <laughs> I might try it. If there's some chocolate in it, that might negate the bitterness. Well, no, that might actually just add to the... Never mind. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna try. <laughs> okay, we have... What in the world is this? I honestly... What is this? <laughs> what is this? The Conquering Circus presents where the stage tells the story spectacular and legends are born. Glorian. I am so confused. What is this? Oh! Lichen and Limestone helped us create this fun and world souvenir style silicone popcorn holder inspired by where dreams descend. Follow the card's directions to pop yourself some delicious popcorn for your next cozy reading session. I wish I had a, had a microwave. I don't. <laughs> Otherwise this would come in handy. I, so like do you- oh you close it like this and then- oh. I did not know that these were a thing. Okay, I'm solely not getting any use out of that because I don't have a microwave. But anyway, oh, I'm gonna save that one for a little bit. So we have, I don't know what this item is, for finding dreams that don't exist yet. What? Where's that from? Okay, and ooh, oh, it's a wax melt. Oh, look at these colors. Those are so cute. Okay, what is the, what is this though? Like, what is this? It's a fox? Why did I smell it? <laughs> Why did I automatically smell the wax? It's like a little fuck stamp. But I don't know where this is from though. That's so cute though. Oh, how I wish I was the kind of person who wrote letters. I will be now, for sure. Transform all your written correspondence into special deliveries with this Once Upon a Broken Heart inspired wax seal kit designed by Paper Bag Bones and Lady Chub letters. Oh, the fox! Oh, well that makes sense with the colors now. That totally makes sense. Wait, oh, I'm... S <laughs> now I kind of don't want to use it. Oh, this is bad. That is so cute. I love that. I don't have a set like this. That is so cute. See, I don't write letters, but I love that item anyway. <laughs> I might be slightly biased because it's Owens oh, Upon a Broken Heart, but still, it's fine. So we got this box and on the back it says the circus arrives without warning. So that is most definitely the night circus. Oh my gosh, why did I just almost call it something else? It's round. Right? Oh, wait, it's a whole clock. They actually put a clock in... They put a clock in the box. Does it work? How do I turn it on? Oh, I need a battery. Wait, that is so cute. I can have that hanging on my wall. Oh, I love the night circus. I was not expecting them to put a whole freaking clock in the box. <laughs> what the heck? No one designs conjured up a bit of magic of Le Cirque de Rive for this wall clock inspired by the night circus. Perfect addition for your desk area or any place that could use a bit of dreaminess added to its decor. That is actually such a cool item. I feel like if you have a clock already, it might be a little bit like overdoing it, but I don't have one and I loved the night circus so, so much when I read it last year, I loved it. Okay, so we have what feels like a mouse pad. Now I <laughs> will probably not be using this simply because I'm very um, particular when it comes to my computers up but we have this mouse pad if you're like into like book like if you want your whole computer set up to look bookish this would probably be nice i also prefer not fabric mouse pads again like i said i'm very particular with my computer setup <laughs> on it it says outside things may be tragic but in here we feel it's magic oh it's moulin rouge which i mean it's moulin rouge it's literally literally a red mill i don't know <laughs> oh that's a shame i love 
love Moulin Rouge. Okay, so I am a pretty big fan of musicals. Like, I love musicals. So I saw them do both a Phantom item and a Moulin Rouge item. I was like, this is my box. Unfortunately, those are the two items. Well, I'm gonna try that one, but I probably won't be getting any use out of this. But that's just because I'm very particular when it comes to my computer setup. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen it in the videos, but it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. Okay, so every month they do a pin that's inspired by like an area in a book. I don't know, I think they're doing Night Circus this month. They are, and they call these, this is design four out of 12. They call them literary luggage, which is always so difficult for me to say, but like I said, this one is Night Circus inspired, so it says Le Cirque de Rêve on the pin. This is gonna go so well on my pin better with the rest of them. I just, I'm so happy that it's Night Circus, because gorgeous book. If you haven't read it, you definitely should. Oh, I see a color theme too. There's a color theme, it's all black, red, and then a little bit of pink, but black, red, and white and a little bit of pink, which is completely cool. We're okay with that. So the book is one that I actually have as a standard version. The book of the month is Hotel Magnifique by Emily J. Taylor. I can actually show you the original cover alongside this one. So we got an author letter right here. If you wanna read it, you can pause it. Hopefully it'll focus on it. So just pause the video right here. I'll be reading it after. I always do. It's always fun to get like an author's insight into why they wrote the book and all that stuff but it always takes me a while to read them because they're always handwritten <laughs> so and I'm not good at reading out loud I stumble upon words all the time I get tongue-tied but we got oh oh that feels funny <gasps> oh right yeah sorry okay so we got the normal edition looks like this and then we have the special edition over here I do like this color scheme quite a lot I'm not gonna lie like pink and sort of like blue green that's a, that's a very nice color scheme. The thing is about this one, it's supposed to be glow in the dark. So I can feel that they've added this glow in the dark to both the title, but also this bit right here and down here too, and also this net. I can't show it to you right now, but I'll be taking some phone shots later when it turns dark. Cause that is so funny. That is, that is so funny. Oh, we got end papers. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So we got some art on the naked cover. Looks like this, it says, green traveler farewell traveler we have end papers that look like this quite foily I do like them is it signed to oh it most definitely is we got a pink signature right here and there's also oh and this is by Jemlin this is inside dust jacket art by Jemlin I can tell because I love their style so much I am excited to read this book at some point that'll be fun it'll, it'll be a, it'll be a fun time I just I know it <laughs> but what this book is about is a girl and I think it's her sister. They're kind of scraping by the girl is doing everything she can to just kind of make it work for her and her sister. And then one day this Hotel Magnifique shows up in town. It's kind of like the night circus. So one day it just kind of shows up and then the next day it's gone. It'll be in some other town or city. But our lead girl has always been dreaming of going somewhere else because she's not fully happy with her existence as it is. So her and her sister visit Hotel Magnifique. However, I think something happens. There's something about a terrible maître d'hôtel who I think is like the director of the hotel. I don't actually fully know what that term means, I'm not gonna lie. We don't use it here, so anyway. So something tells me that her sister might be taken away by this terrible director of the hotel and she needs help from the very handsome and very helpful doorman to sort out the secrets and also do something about this terrible maître d'hôtel. So, that is pretty much what this book is about. I think it's a standalone book, don't quote me on it. It might not be. We got our Owl Crate scoop right here. I already showed you the differences between the regular and the Owl Crate version, but just in case you wanna see them on paper, you can see them right there. We also have, I think there should be, yeah, a playlist. So if you want some theatrical music, you can scan this playlist right here for Spotify and the playlist will show up. But there's an interview with Emily J. Taylor as well. Oh, and if you like Hotel Magnifique, they recommend Dreams Lie Beneath by Rebecca Ross, which I believe I have standing right here. Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber, and Where Dreams Descend by Janela Angelis. I'll put it right there, you can see. So that was the April box. I think the May box is being sent off very soon, actually, so I'll probably have it in a couple of weeks. 
but the theme is the chosen ones and I know the book I didn't know that it actually existed before they announced the theme but now I'm really excited for it so <laughs> as for my favorite item oh gosh it'll either have to be the clock or the set even though I won't be using it but I love it I love the idea of it <laughs> yeah one of these two I think so but yeah I will be linking to All Crate's website and also their Instagram in the description box. But that's it for the uh, the unboxing. I hope you enjoyed it, this part of the vlog. Let's get back to the rest of it. Actually, I don't know if I'm recording more for the vlog today, but I'll definitely be checking in tomorrow because I have exciting book mail, so you can count on that. So, it's still Wednesday. Ignore the mess, and the, just, just don't look at it anyway. I know that I said I was gonna do this tomorrow, but... Let me just adjust. However, <laughs> I have zero self-control, okay? So I got a notification that my special editions arrived and did I mention I have zero self-control? So instead of waiting for tomorrow to go pick them up, I decided to just go do it now. I'm so happy that I did because I'm pretty sure it's gonna rain tomorrow. Although, let me tell you, it is so windy outside. I hate the wind so much. The wind will be the bane of my existence, I swear. <laughs> Anywho, I'm gonna make this short because I've already unboxed one thing today, so let's not make <laughs> this like a like like a, a big thing. But also, Illumicrate is having another announcement in six minutes. They're having an announcement week. So far, they announced a trio of Emily Henry books that I really want. And what else did they announce? Oh yeah, Save Real. But like, look at these. I mean, come on. So cute. So freaking cute. I so badly want like a little romance shelf. I have one, it's rainbow, but like romance hardbacks. Are you ready for this? Cause I don't feel like I am. Oh my gosh. Okay, first one. The edges are so perfect. Like it blends in so well. These are stunning. The best part though, I mean, she's gorgeous. She's gorgeous. This is designed by Hafsa Faisal herself. And our sequel, We Free the Stars. The art on the dust jacket, uh, the redesigned art, is done by Monolime Art, who's basically one of my favorites. Ooh, okay. So, <laughs> it kind of sold me. Look how well these edges go with the covers. Like, that is so good. And this, like, color-wise, goes so well together, too. Ooh, orange. Very, very orange. And we got stunning foiling on this naked cover, too. Also done by House of SL. I have zero clue how I'm gonna display these, but I'm gonna find a way. I have to do, like, a reorganization video at some point soon. I keep postponing it. Well, that's just because I don't really know. <laughs> I don't really know how I want to display my bookcases, so I haven't figured it out yet. But it's gonna happen soon. My edges on this one are just like a tiny bit wonky, but honestly, I don't care. I, I don't I don't mind too much. I mean, oh, he's, he's a beautiful man. I believe that, yes, it's also signed. <gasps> Ooh, this is signed too, with a gold pin, okay. Yeah, okay, these are beautiful, gorgeous. I'm gonna figure out how to display them. I have no idea. But I just thought I would open them on cam at least, because it's always fun. If you've read um, We Hunt the Flame and We Free the Stars, let me know what you thought of them. I was just kind of, I haven't read them yet. I own them, just haven't read them yet. It's kind of dumb, but <laughs> it's just how it is sometimes. But I do own the OG ones, so the, uh, the standard ones. I just haven't, just haven't gotten around to reading them yet, but I've heard beautiful things, so I'm super excited. I was sold on these because of everything, basically. Monolime art, the foiling done by Hafsa Faisal herself, and also the edges are just beautiful. Anyway, I'm gonna go see what this announcement is. I'm so excited, but just wanted to open these with you, so I'll check in later. So, here's the thing. It's been more than a couple of days. I have been a very bad vlogger this week. <laughs> And by this week, I mean last week, because it's actually Tuesday today, as in it's been a whole six days. I don't know, time just kind of flew by. My intention was to update over the weekend, but trying to prepare to do a 24-hour readathon has taken up all my time. Thing is, now I've also moved the readathon until next week, because it turns out that that just fits better with other plans that I have this week. But because of that, I haven't really updated the vlog, so I'm gonna include today and also tomorrow to make up for that. But that also means this vlog is gonna be up a little bit late. It's okay though. Another thing is, I did not have any reading updates 
not really anyway because I didn't have much time to read in between Wednesday and honestly yesterday Monday. I finished Strange the Dreamer though today a couple of hours ago and this book is stupidly beautiful like I don't even fully know how to put it into words it's just different from what I've read recently it's just I don't know it's just different if that makes sense. <laughs> I feel like you can kind of put yourself in both of the- like even though it's a fantasy world too, something for me that's very important with the books that I read is that the characters, I can relate to them in some way and somehow both of these characters just have aspects to them that are so freaking relatable even though like one of them is- I don't know how much I'm supposed to say to be honest. Yeah, one of them is supposed to be kind of like a god, but not really. She's she's the child of a god, so... But also, when I say relatable, like, they're both relatable, it's in this weird way that I haven't really come across in other books. Like, suddenly they'll just say something or there'll be a quote and I'm like, that is phrased so beautifully and I'm like, that- I just- I fully understand that and I don't- <laughs> It's so weird because I haven't come across that elsewhere. Like, I don't know if I can pick one out because honestly, I suck at tabbing quotes. Yeah, and I think I kind of- pink is like love but also just stuff that I love as well. Like, it's just love. <laughs> and some point in the middle, I just kind of forgot to to tab. <laughs> so I, I, I lost a lot. <laughs> I'll be better at it once I start Muse of Nightmares though, but this is like beautiful. I think I'm gonna give it somewhere between like four and a half and five stars. It was a little bit slow for me during the first, I want to say 50%, but that is also that is also- or 40, I should say. But it's also partly on me because I get better, like, sucked into a book if I just completely binge it. And I didn't really have the chance to do that for the first 40%. I was reading like 40 pages a day or something, so- because I didn't have time for more than that, so I didn't really get the chance to do that. But the last, like, 60, I soaked them up. Beautiful. So she's stunning. Yep. Love this to bits. And I can't wait to get started with Muse of Nightmares, which is all my shelves behind me. But I know that there's been a lot of like new books introduced throughout this vlog. I did receive one more today, which is I Kissed Shara Wheeler by Casey McQuiston, which is a young adult contemporary romance. And I don't really do a lot of young adult contemporary romance. I definitely prefer adult over young adult when it comes to that. However, Casey McQuiston wrote Red, White, and Royal Blue, and <laughs> I'm a sucker for that book. <laughs> So I thought, you know what, let's give it a shot. This copy is so cute. I think it's just the regular... Oh, it's the it's the US. Okay. All right, because it's green. The UK one is blue. I went for this one deliberately because I'm going to show you. First of all, end papers are so spring-like. Like, what are these? They are the cutest. But also on the naked cover, it's filled with... It's filled with kisses. Like, I love that. <laughs> so I'm thinking this will be a book that's quite good for like a 24 hour readathon at some point. So, but I also want to say, and this is another reason why I wanted to update this vlog today. If you haven't already, I am kind of doing a different TBR for June. So I need you guys to go over to the community tab and leave all the titles of your favorite books in a comment on the last post so that I can include them in my TBR because I'm doing a different TBR. So that's just how it is. <laughs> Don't know how to put that into words either, but let me know all your favorite book titles over there so I can kind of compi compile them and see which ones I have access to. It'll be very much appreciated, but as for now, I might check in on you guys later with a, a reading update before I go to bed, but I have so much work to do today as well. I gotta do a sponsorship and stuff, so it's just kind of nonstop. But regardless, I will also update you tomorrow and wrap up this vlog as well. There's not a thing that I can get from you Boy, I don't need that much, need that much How can I tell you what I want to do? I never needed you to give me things I never needed gifts or diamond rings All I ever need, I need, I All I ever need is here Where we can go Where 
gonna turn out to be the weirdest vlog I have ever done. <laughs> Cause it's been a couple more days since the last time. So the footage that I put in before this clip was from our walk Wednesday, but it's actually been a couple of days since Wednesday. However, I've just not had the time to finish up the vlog and I don't like to just leave the ending hanging like, like without saying goodbye. That feels weird, right? If you can hear noises in the background, my computer is being a little funny right now. It's fine. But as for reading updates, hold on. I'm gonna go get my book. I started Muse of Nightmares Tuesday? Wednesday? I don't remember. I'm like 50 pages into it. You basically pick up where Strange the Dreamer leaves off. However, I stopped reading this because Thursday I was gonna start this Poison Heart because we are covering this one over on Patreon. It's the primary pick of the month. So I was gonna start this one Thursday. Have not had time to start that vlog yet. I will be doing a spoilery vlog on it, but just not have the time. So I'll be starting this today, but I don't want to read two young adult fantasy books at the same time. I feel like that might be a little bit, not necessarily confusing, but not optimal either. So I stopped reading Muse of Nightmares, put it on pause. We'll be picking it up again though, because those books are beautiful. But I started reading The Sweetest Oblivion, I think it's called by by who's it by daniel laurie which is an adult contemporary romance i have been told by friends to read it because they thought it was good i keep seeing people reading it and reviewing it on my like timeline on goodreads but i always thought those books that series i always thought it was erotica so i've just kind of like the covers keep popping up for me but for some reason i just thought it was erotica so i've been trying to avoid it because i just don't read i like smut you know but to a degree. <laughs> I don't want my whole reading experience to be about it. That said, I don't think The Sweetest Oblivion is a mafia romance and that's generally not really my thing simply because the women in those stories are often kind of treated like objects and that's just not something that I fully enjoy reading about. Like it's always, there's always a lead character who's a girl who's like, I know that this is what my family's like, I know that I'm an object, but I don't follow those standards. But you kind of do anyway, because you're married off to someone and you just happen to be happy with them. So like, you're still follow, like you're just lucky that you were married off to someone who you actually like. <laughs> So I tend to stay away from mafia romances for that reason. <laughs> but I'm reading this one, I'm enjoying it, but I don't, I still have this like thing with those books. They're just not really, yeah. But that was the reading update. I did get three more books yesterday. Two of them I've already put away, but I'll show you the other one. Because since I got Catwoman Soul Stealer by Sarah J Maas, which is focus camera, thank you, <laughs> which is one of the DC Icons books, I also decided to buy Wonder Woman Warbringer by Leroy Dugo. Also bought used. I have not taken off the sticker yet, but I don't know where to put this on my shelves. So I'm gonna do, this is what I'm planning to do soon. Maybe not next week, but maybe the week after. I'm gonna do a reorganizing of my bookshelves. Bookshelves? Okay. We're just gonna go with it. <laughs> so that'll be like in its own video because I know myself included love watching people organize their bookshelves. <laughs> love it. I don't know. It's a thing. And then I'll do like a mid-year bookcase tour. Bookshelf tour? Yeah, that sort of thing. So that's kind of what I'm planning these days. But both of those videos are gonna take so long to do. So I just need the time. <laughs> but I think those were the updates I got for you. In regards to reading, I'm gonna wrap up this vlog now so I can get started reading this Poison Heart and do a lot of work today as well because it's never ending and that's just how it is sometimes. <laughs> oh, if you were wondering, by the way, what was causing me to finish this vlog so late, it's because of a sponsorship. It was a whole thing. I don't want to get into it. It's not fun to hear about, but it got in the way of a lot of things. <laughs> so. It is what it is. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed this bit of a different vlog. Definitely been a very ranty, very book haul -y. That's not a word, but we're gonna go with it. But I hope you enjoyed it regardless. If you did, feel free to hit the thumbs up. If you're new here and you're stuck around for this entire video and you wanna see more from me, consider hitting the subscribe button. Also, if you just wanna nerd out with me and everyone in the comments too, definitely stick around. And that is all I got for you guys for this vlog. I was about to say for today. I might be recording later, who knows? But I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.